The year 2020 brought unprecedented challenges across the world with a global pandemic in the form of COVID-19. COVID-19 also resulted in national lockdowns, specifically in the UK. A year later, and we're still in lockdown. Many are for these lockdowns and many are against. These circumstances have brought into question existing laws and also have resulted in the government proposing new laws. New laws such as those that are being protested against today, to my left. There are those who are for the laws and are with giving the police more rights. There are also those who are protesting today and who have been across the nation for the last few weeks who are of the opinion that these new laws are going to infringe upon their human rights. Six minutes for a roadblock versus three hours for a woman who is a danger to herself and others. That is absolutely fucking disgusting. I'm Naila, I'm from an organisation called uh, Stand Up Racism. Uh, I'm, I'm the co-chair of the organisation here in the Greater Manchester area, but obviously it's a national organisation. And where we've come out part of a whole host of other, alongside a whole host of other organisations to campaign against this new crime bill that the Tories are trying to push through. Can you just tell us what the crime bill is? So basically it's a bill that would, would stop us from demonstrating. So in the bill it says that uh, you can be fined or stopped from having a, having a demonstration if the police think it's you're being a nuisance. But A, isn't that what demonstrations are about? You're meant to be noisy and like disruptive. And also, who are the police to decide whether a, a demonstration should go ahead or not? Especially when we're deciding to have a demonstration against what they've done and their, you know, their aggressions on us. Why should they be the ones to decide whether we have the right to demonstrate? It's also not just about stopping demonstrations. Like, as an individual, if I wanted to boycott a business, say it was like some arms trade or whatever, or some, you know, like loads, like we did with the apartheid in South Africa where we boycotted certain businesses, we won't be able to do that anymore. Because apparently you can't do something that would impact somebody, you know, or a business economically. Well, what the hell? I mean, that's our power, isn't it? So you can't do things like that. We won't be able to have picket lines. We wouldn't. Uh, and really, it would go after people like the, the Roma community, the travelling community, eat, you know. It, it's just, it, it would just be an attack on our human rights, and it would give them the right, the police, the powers to, you know, target minority communities even more than they're already doing. So, for instance, if you have already been um, convicted of, of a knife crime, they could stop and harass you on the streets. Even if there's no evidence is there that you're connected with whichever crime they're investigating, they can stop you regardless. So can you imagine that, what that means for hundreds of, you know, particularly young black men, kids really, up and down this country, if you give those powers to this, the police. I just think it's a massive step backwards for us and it's an attack on our human rights and that's why we're out and I thought it was great, you know, I thought it was great that so many people came out, that they stood up to the police, uh, you know, and there's so much pressure on us, isn't it, to not come out because there's a pandemic. Actually, you're far safer being out in the streets in open air than you are in your supermarket or the fact that they've sent kids back to school or, you know, I think it's really important for us to say that we don't, we as working class people keep ourselves and each other safe. It's this government and their policies that have meant that thousands of people have lost their lives because of COVID, not us. And that's why we're out on the streets. If people support the message, you can they follow you anywhere? Yes, they can. So obviously, like I said, the campaign, I mean, I'm not an organiser for the, for the demonstration today. But lots of organisations are supporting the campaign to stop the bill. And so a standard to race in Greater Manchester, we are part of a meeting that's been called on Monday evening at 6pm. So if people follow us on our social media, they can find out the details about that meeting, they can register, they can join the Zoom meeting, and they can get involved in the discussion around what should we do. Like lots of people have got really creative ideas about how to campaign against the bill. And we want as many of those people involved, part of the mass movement, because one of the things that we know for a fact is if we stand together, we're stronger and, and we, can, we can stop this government and we can stop this stop the bill. Kill the bill, 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 the bill, the bill, the I go by the angles on YouTube, not gonna give out my real name because I don't really like that. Uh, 
I'm a, pro I'm a protester, I protest quite a lot, I give speeches. I generally care about the right to protest. See, it's fine whilst everybody doesn't care now, but what about when people are fighting for higher wages and what about when it affects them personally? That's when people will care. And people need to start caring now because if they care later, they'll probably end up with a lot of consequences for it. Thank you. Especially after this year that we've had, um, the main message that I just wanted to get across to everyone is that like, let's just remember the anger that we're feeling as we all got made redundant and lost our jobs and then they just didn't care about us. And now as we're trying, and now just because they think they've gotten away with everything they've done, they're trying to just dictate to us even more, trying to tell us that this right here is illegal, uh, but that's not, but this is not, this isn't what we voted for, this isn't who we want. And uh, the point I'm trying to say is remember the anger that we've, we've been feeling so far and let's never forget it because it's very easy when we get back to normal and we all start working and start going back to the normal lives and we'll forget about this, but we'll never forget this. Okay, we've already had 2008 and now we've had 2020. Let's not forget this, let's keep this energy going. Uh, and yeah, that's someone who doesn't really do protest, but yeah, that's all I wanted to say, so yeah, thank you. That's not right. That really is not right. That's not the country that I was brought up in. I was told that I could be who I wanted to be and support who I wanted to support. That's that's what I was told when I was growing up. But now it seems like COVID just feels like over and over and over we just been over by this Tory government, and it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop until we start using our voices, which is what we're doing now. Now, there's a lot of things that we've all been protesting. For example, even during COVID, we were protesting Black Lives Matter, and they demonised us then. They demonised us and they said that we were violent, and we were constantly angry. No, we are angry, but we're not being violent. We're being violent because we've been provoked. We're being provoked constantly. The presence of police here is what's provoking us. Then when they come up to us and we say, no comment, we don't want to speak to you. No comment, go away. That's when they properly go for us. So everybody here, do not rise to their jabs at you. Stand your fucking ground. Stand your fucking ground. They can't tell us what to do. Yes, it may be fucking illegal, but that's why I want to say what I want to say. So, fuck the police. Fuck the police. Black Lives Matter, okay? Kill the fucking bell, because Jesus Christ, I'm annoyed about that little cunt. And also, listen to each other. I come up here, I'm speaking, I'm a cis white woman. There's so many other voices that you need to listen to today. You, listen, you need to listen to the black women that are going to be speaking today. You need to listen to the trans women. You need to listen to the non-binary people that are going to speak today. Because they're constantly being fucked over as well. They're being fucked over more than anybody else in this situation. If Sarah, Sarah Everard was a woman of colour, we wouldn't have heard about it. That's a lot to take in. It's because she was a white woman that we heard about it and we got annoyed. So listen to everyone that's going to speak up today. I can't stress it enough. So fuck the police. One thing I noticed was that all the conservatives, every time, are on the wrong side of history. Every time. I think they've been on the right side of history. And once again, unfortunately, oh, We've also seen here that history repeats itself every time they try and infringe on people's rights. And here they're infringing on people's rights to protest, it's a human right. And I, I, just, I just thought that was really important. I'm glad that so many people here have recognised that and turned out. You know, we've all got something to say. You know, what we're is 
and the Tory government once again proving how, you know, they want to do that. They want, they want to maintain the status quo. They want to maintain the elitist control on power by limiting people's rights to protest. And I just, I just thought that was really important to say. I'm so happy to see all these people together, of all colours, of all ages, and you know what, fuck the police, we've got this, kill the bill, get everyone equal rights, because I'm sick of this, and also, let's not forget the rest of the people around the world, the women who we need to stand up for, the men who we need to stand up for, trans people, bi people, Everyone, everyone needs to be taken into account for. Thank you for being here today. And well done. We've heard all your heart and stand up for your rights. Hi everybody. It's great to be here with so many people. There was a guy on just now who was saying he's not really a campaigner. Well, let me tell you, I am a campaigner. But I want, to tell, I want to speak about a group of people that we haven't referred to today who, whose rights are seriously challenged in this bill, and that is the Gypsies and Travellers. The Trespass Bill, it, 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 it prevents us from free travel in the, in the countryside. It attacks people who are homeless on the streets. But it takes away the absolute livelihood, the homes, the way of life of gypsies and travellers. These people, in the 1500s, it was, it was a capital offence to be a gypsy in this country. And not only that, it was a capital offence to befriend or associate with, with gypsies. And we're returning to that terrible racist state and we have to challenge it absolutely and stand with those people and all other oppressed people. So, for everybody, let's keep working and don't let's forget. Okay, the police are implicated, but the people who are putting through this bill are the fascists in our government. And according to the government, 
This bill is going to give the police powers and tools they need to keep themselves and us safe. But we know the police don't keep us safe. And the idea that that institution, which exists solely to uphold the interests of the state, should be given more power over protesters is dangerous. It's not in the interest of those at the top of society to encourage change. The capitalist system is working fine for them, but that system, that racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic system, which is causing the deaths of so many of us, needs to be opposed. Resistance has never been more important. We have to oppose this bill. We need to get involved with local movements, and we have to keep fighting for our right to protest. Hi everyone. Um, I just realised that if a hundred years ago today we didn't have the right to protest, women wouldn't have the right to vote. So any woman that voted for us to not have the right to protest should be ashamed because they wouldn't have been able to do that. They wouldn't have been able to vote to even choose that if we had the right to protest. So a hundred years ago, they didn't. Women couldn't vote. And that's all because of the suffragettes. And it's all because they protested. And if we can't protest, then nothing will change. Because the only thing we can do is change things ourselves. So who's street? Our street! Who's street? Our street! Who's street? Our street! Thank you for all coming out today. You're all amazing! We are where we are today because of the people who, like us, have stood here and fought for everything we have. And if people think they can stop us, they're fucking wrong because everyone here has a lot to say. And the people who, who, vote, who protested for the right to vote got women where they are today. The world still isn't perfect and there's still a lot I want to change. And there's still a lot everyone wants to change. Sorry, I'm still in there. But... I'd just like to say, when 
I first heard about this bill coming through, my first thought was, how fucking dare they? How dare they got what we can and can't do in our own fucking streets? How dare they tell me that I can't come out here and protest my right, pro protest the fact that I am being run down every single day for so many things. I grew up in a council estate. I grew up in a woman's body when I am trans. I am non-binary. I, I grew up with so many reasons why I need to protest and so many reasons why I need to speak my truth into the street and still they are telling me that I can't protest? How fucking dare they? now. Fucking hell. And I just want to say, I'm so glad that everyone is here supporting and like with their fellow brother and sister. Like we said before, say if you're a straight white cis male, you're here. You're helping. You're being an ally. You're doing what you can. You're being here and showing support with your people, your fellow people who need the support, who need their voices heard, and who need the extra voices and the extra loudness that we are going to give today. As they said, be angry, shout, scream, show us what you want to hear. Show us, show us what is in your mind, what is here. Because if we don't, then how the fuck is any of this going to change? If we sit at home and if we just sit and we let this happen while it's going on in our own streets, if we just let it happen, then we're just as bad as the people who are fucking doing this to us. We're just as bad as the people who are putting up this bill. We are not going to stand for it, and we're going to stand together in solidarity to make sure that this shit doesn't happen again. <laughs>
you feed into what the media say about us. I hope that you don't just actually believe that we're all thick and that we all just want to cry over nothing and that we are all violent. We, it's not on us to gain the police's trust. It's not on us. Instead, they need to gain our trust. Sorry, right. So what we want is, we want accessible whistleblowing. I don't believe that you are going to provide that. I don't believe that you are going to be able to do that. What we need is enough funding for social workers, for the NHS, for mental health services, for charities that are trained and are able to deal with people so that you don't have to interfere when situations get to a level where somebody is needed. You are not trained enough to deal with people that need you. So we don't want you there. We want the money to go towards people that know what they're doing. Sorry, sorry. Ah!